Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be showing you how to speedrun a random world on Minecraft. So in my last video, which you should check out if you haven't seen, I showed you how to speedrun the best bedrock seed. But today, in case you want to do something different, I'm going to be showing you how to speedrun any completely random world. So first of all, the rules. Uh, normally you want to be in survival. For this tutorial, I'm going to be in creative, but normally you definitely want to be in survival. And then the difficulty, you want to make it easy because this is the easiest difficulty, unless you want a real challenge. And, but you don't make it peaceful as this will then be disqualified. You want to leave the seed blank for this. If you put in a seed, uh, it will immediately be disqualified because like I said, this is for a completely random world, which is different to when you have a set world. So you want to leave this completely blank. And then the rest of the coordinates, these ones are just completely up to you. Um, I normally like to turn on coordinates just in case I might need to save the coordinates of something. But apart from that, yeah, it's all up to you. I'll also turn on immediate respawn. And then make sure to turn off cheats as this will then be disqualified if you turn on. No, all, normally, automatically they will be turned off, but because I switched to creative, they were turned on. So make sure that those are off. So this is the point in the video when I ask you to subscribe you don't have to now if you don't want to just make sure uh, if you like the video you give it a like and you subscribe to the channel we really appreciate it here so that would be amazing if you did that so as I said this is gonna be a completely random world I've never seen this before Um, so you have to be prepared for the unexpected in this. You have to be thinking on your feet. And it's a lot more intense than the SS... Well, not really more intense, but it's a lot more skillful than the set seed. So this is an interesting spawn. So normally what you want for speedrunning is a spawn maybe in a desert um, or a savanna biome where you can easily find... A village because that is very important but for this tutorial tutorial I'm just going to be using this world so again normally if you want a really quick time then you can just you can just uh, reset the world because you want to get the best seed possible but if you are just trying to beat the game then it doesn't really matter what seed you're on the other one just makes it quicker. So first thing that you need to do is you need to get some wood. So this is a very skillful part of the game. So you have to get this wood. So I'm actually going to switch switch into survival to show you how quick we can do this. Actually, you know, one second thoughts I'm not. So you grab, I like to grab six wood just in case I want to make a shield later on. Then you'd place down your crafting table about here. Then you'd craft you'd craft something you'd craft a wooden pickaxe and then you just mine down until you reach stone you mine the stone you i like to mine a uh, 17 stone usually that means i can make a furnace and i can make my full stone tools but also if you're speed running you only want a bit of stone because Ideally, you're getting your iron from iron golem, so you don't need a furnace. And if you're on Java Edition, you need two less stone because uh, you, you can just use an axe instead of using a sword. But on Bedrock Edition, I always recommend getting a sword unless you're trying to properly speedrun. Then you want to be as fast as possible and you probably won't be playing on the seed anyways. So next, you've got your tools. So there's two things that you can do. You can go mining for iron. So this wouldn't really be speed running. This would be a bit of a slow method. But on this seed, I think that would be a bit quicker. Or you could go and you could start searching for a village. Now, this is going to be, this is quite rare. 
obviously. So, uh, on this type of speed run, you have to get very lucky as well. So, um, it's important that you know what to look for. So, these biomes here, the kind of mountain biomes, they look a bit like this. All these tall hills and this flat, gravelly, stony, lots of coal kind of land. This is where you will not find any villagers. The best place for villagers is either a desert or a plains biome. This is where you'll find the most villagers. You can also find them in tiger biomes, which is where we spawned. So, I'm not going to be able to find a village here. Because, like I said, this is the mountains biome or the extreme hills biome. So, it won't be perfect. Uh, and you won't be able to find any villagers here. But if you do find a village, you need to know how to raid it. So what I like, what speedrunners usually do is they pillar up three blocks. I always like to pillar up four though, just to be safe. So you pillar up four blocks, you hit the iron golem, and then the iron golem will not be able to hit you, but you can hit it. And that's really, really uh, useful and it's a very efficient way of getting iron. The iron golem can drop three to five iron. So once you've done that, you want to get a bucket of water and then you want um you want a flint and steel. This isn't necessary, it just makes it a lot lot quicker. I'm also going to get a lava bucket, and I'll show you why in a second. I'm actually going to get a few. So basically, um, the reason I'm getting all these lava buckets is because we need to now build a nether portal. So usually you'd go and get diamonds, and you'd mine some obsidian that you found. But for this, um, let me get some blocks. So... Just gonna get if I can find any blocks, I'll just get glass. Sea and stained glass, how about that? So you want to find a lava pool. They're like little water lakes, but lava. And they're quite noticeable because they'll normally be surrounded by stone on a flat surface. So if you're just walking through a plain fire and you came across lots of stone, be suspicious because there might be a lava pool there. So, um, I'm just going to set up an artificial lava pool. Quick way. So, um, you have to imagine there was a lava pool there. It's very hard to learn this, I guess. Um, but it's very important to learn because it's the quickest and easiest way of getting lava and even in my regular survival worlds I use this because this is a really really efficient method. So what you need to do is you need to pull out one block and place this water here and break that and you've got this. Uh, then you want to pick up the water but because I'm a creative I can't so I'll just do that. Then I'll go up one, two, three, one, two, uh, one, two, three, and then across. And then I want to do these two blocks here. So that's how you're going to do it. Then it doesn't always work, especially in ravines. Uh, you can sometimes have spillovers, but this has worked. It's worked this time. So then you need to just grab the lava from here and put it into this shape. So it's a bit like in the stronghold from the last video, but just natural. And then you want to, normally these two will be done for you if it's a deep lava lake, but obviously I just made this one block deep. So you want to fill in those two, then across and across. Perfect. And then you can pick up your water and there you go. So now you need to go to the nether as soon as possible. So this is the tricky part, and this might be a part that I'm not able to show you, but I'll try my best. Hopefully I'll get lucky. 
So once the nether loads in, what you want to do is you want to search for a bastion and for a nether fortress. So you you have to go quite a while for this because they are quite rare, just like with the villagers. So as you can see, this is quite a luck dependent category. But you want to go and find a nether fortress and a bastion, and here's why. I'll just I'm not gonna go searching for one because I don't want to make the video too long for you guys. But so what you want is blaze uh, you don't want blaze spawner because that'd be cheating but what you need is when you go to the fortress you'll find these guys they're blazers and you just need to kill them as quick as possible really quick because you don't have your tools and then they drop as uh, so that one just did there hopefully this one will do so i can show you what it looks like actually probably show you from the last one but so there you go this is a blaze rod uh they're very important Oh my gosh, there's another fortress right over there. So, as I said, when you go here, here we are. So that you'll just find these blazers everywhere. And then, but the quickest place to find blazers, and this is an insanely lucky place, is you want a double spawner. But these blaze spawners, these will spawn blazers for you. So you just need to kill them with your sword with your stone sword that you got at the beginning maybe if you get enough spare iron you can craft some other stuff but these double spawners they're especially quick because you can just go back and forth back and forth and then uh, they'll spawn much quicker and you'll be able to get through here much quicker but that's only one part of the nether because the other part what you need to do so you need to find a bastion so uh, a bastion is a really big blackstone structure. If you don't know what blackstone looks like, blackstone, this is what it, it will be made up of these kind of blocks. So that's very important to remember. It will be made up of these kind of blocks. And those blocks, uh, they will make up a big box. Now there's four types of bastions and I'm not gonna explain how to do them all, but, um, when you get to a bastion, uh, if you want to search up on YouTube after this video, the how to raid the four types of bastions. So this is very important because when you find a bastion, uh, it will be one of four types, and then and it will have a bunch of gold gold blocks hidden in it, and um, it will have a bunch of piglins. So if you don't know what piglins are or what they do then i'll show you here very quickly so piglins um they trade items with you when you throw them gold they barter with you so i'm gonna get some piglin spawn eggs and i'm gonna spawn some piglins here i got that no okay so i'm gonna spawn a few piglins you see They'll actually attack you if you're not wearing gold. So you either want to be very stacked and safe, or maybe you just want to, as soon as you can, just craft some gold boots. Um, and then they will not attack you. So you're gonna get a bunch of gold blocks from that bastion, which then you can convert into a bunch of gold, right? And then once you've got all this gold, when you throw it down to these piglins, they are going to start bartering with you. And if you see in a second, they will start randomly just throwing random items at you. So, not completely random, they have a few set trades. But these are a few things that you can get. And one of them is ender cards. This is another extremely lucky part. You have to get really lucky for this. But, occasionally, they will throw you ender pulls. I don't think they're gonna throw ender pulls that quickly. Um, but yeah, that's why you want a lot of gold. And again, this is one of the very lucky parts. You want to get just really quick, lots of ender pulls. It's a bit easier to get ender pulls in other editions, but uh, but 
yeah, it will take a while. You just want to try and get as lucky as possible. Then when you're done, you can just go back to another fortress because I've been exploring so much. Actually, what you can do is um, you can get a, a, some obsidian from these guys as well. So that you can see they've already brought me one obsidian. Um, so yeah. So, as you can see, oh, as you can see, they'll just throw you random items and hopefully uh, they'll give you ender pearls. So, yeah, they've given me some obsidian, so I'll just build a portal really quick. There's some more obsidian. So, you can see they give quite a lot of obsidian, so building a portal shouldn't be a problem. And then also, if you want to, you can just skip out the corners. So you only actually need 10 obsidian. You don't need the full 14 obsidian. And then, oh. Then you want to go back through to the overland. Okay. So... Um, one thing that I've forgot, forgotten to tell you is when you find a village, because villages, you need to find them for the run. Um, when you find a village, you want to take all the beds from the village, okay? You need to take all the beds, because they're going to be very useful later on. So, I spawn in the middle of the ocean. It's kind of a weird spawn. Um, but, you can see. Oh! Swarms with this, you just want to. It doesn't really matter. Maybe you want to prepare a boat just in case, but yeah, again, it doesn't matter too much. So, you want to come back to the overworld. So, again, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to hit the subscribe button and like. But don't leave yet, because I still have to show you the most important part. Okay, come on. Here we go. So, now what you want to do is you want to get some ender eyes. So, how you do that, so with your ender pearls from Piglin Training, so ender pearls will look like this. Obviously, they'll... Uh, all the purple bits will be green. Uh, it's just with my texture pack, they look a bit different. And then your blaze rods. What you can do is you can craft with the blaze rods, you can craft blaze powder. And then with blaze powder, you can craft, uh, with and ender ice, you can craft these eyes of ender. So you want to get, I like to stay safe and only get, uh, only get a few. So maybe you want to just get five at the beginning. Um, and then hope that they don't break. So they have a 20% chance of breaking. So there you go, I just picked that up. So these will guide you, so you can see, these will guide you in the direction of the stronghold. So you, it might take, it might be a really long way away, it might not be, it depends. But, yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to show you the method. You just need to keep on following these eyes. So, again, this is another really lucky part. There's lots of luck in this. Um, but um, you want to go as far as you can, as fast as you can. Um, okay, so yeah, I'm just going to keep on... Normally, you don't want to throw the, the eyes too commonly in case they break. But I'm just going to throw them quite commonly so I can get them... Get to the stronghold as quick as possible. Okay. So... Here's a village. So, like I said, uh, there's the iron golem. What you want to do... I'm just going to demonstrate for you now. I found the village. What you want to do is you want to stack up one, two, three, four blocks, then hit him. Obviously he's not going to get angry at me because I'm in creative, but he uh, he will get angry at you and he'll begin to hit you. But you have to be careful 
Because if you stacked up three blocks here, then he would walk up here, he'd be able to hit you. That is very dangerous. So you can stack up five blocks at this point, if you want, and then get him. Uh, it doesn't make really make a difference if you do it five blocks, but make sure not to do it three blocks next to a ledge. If you really want to, you can do it, you can try and find a really high place like this and then just stack up three blocks then no, he won't be able to go onto any ledges near you but still it's better to be safe so yeah that's how you kill the iron golem and then like i said you want to get all the beds so in each house there'll be some beds yeah, the villagers are sleeping right now so i won't disturb them but obviously not in all the houses there are beds but I'm gonna burn you. Oh my gosh. Okay, I don't know what's happening. Um, but yeah, in the houses, sometimes in some of the houses, there will be beds. Why have I picked two that don't have beds? Uh, in most of the houses, there will be beds. In this house, there are gonna be beds. This house, there's gonna be two beds. So you can see there's plenty and plenty of beds around the place. You just need to get them as quick as possible. And if you really want to, you can study villages. You can look at where the beds, beds are usually placed in which houses they're in. Um, and if you And you can really practice this. And also now I found one. If you come across a desert temple, you want to go down it. You can MLG water all. Be careful. Uh, because obviously I'm a creative and I can't do it. Do not step on this pressure plate yet. So what you want to do now is you want to go down here and collect all this TNT. So actually what I'm going to do, because I'm not going to pick it up, is I'm just going to get this TNT. But you're going to go down here, you're going to collect all this TNT. Okay. So, then, what you're going to do is, once I get out of here, what you're going to do is, you're going to place one of the TNT there, then the stone pressure plate that you mined, which I'm going to go get one of, the stone pressure plate that you didn't mind, you want to place it here, then you're going to go here, Block up, block up, block up, block up, block up. And then it will explode everything and you can collect all the items, all the loot very quickly. You can get some really good stuff in these, so it's always really good to loot these. You can get god apples even. So yeah, very important to loot these. And also if you find a savannah and you haven't found a village yet, savannah biomes are very good for finding villagers. And uh if you're speedrunning on an older version, there's another tactic which you can search for on YouTube, which involves savannah villagers. But, anyways, so yeah, you want to keep on finding strongholds apart from that. Um, it's leading me in the direction of the village. Also, sometimes villagers are where the strongholds actually are. I don't think there's village but oh that's interesting it's gone so maybe it is this village if i throw the stronghold if i throw the eye here where's it going wait it's going in the sky ah uh, so it's going down you can see there we go. So now, because it's gone down here into the ground, we know it's going to be about here. So hopefully I'll find it. Okay, there we go. So you, if you find these stone bricks, that means you have successfully located it. Be careful of mobs down here. They are around these a lot. The next step is to find the portal room. There are lots of rooms in strongholds. Um... And it can be very confusing. 
Uh, these rooms, the libraries, they can actually have some pretty good loot. Um, if you find the chests. You can never remember where they are. Sometimes they're hidden. So, obviously that isn't that good, but... You can find some really good loot in the library. Uh, but normally when you want to get a really quick time, you wouldn't go in there unless it might lead on to the portal room. But anyways, uh, so yeah, the portal room. I'm going to try and find it. If you watch my other video, you'll know what it looks like. So again, I recommend you watch my other video because I give you a lot more tips and tricks about speedrunning and that. But... I'm going to try and find the portal room. Like I said, these strongholds are very complicated. They go in all directions and stuff. So it will take a while. They can also spawn without a portal room, but that's very rare. And don't give up just because you think that's happened. Because more often than not, it actually hasn't. So, really, don't give up just because you can't find it. You think that your stronghold didn't spawn with them. It's extremely rare, so uh, don't think that happened because it probably didn't. Okay, so I don't want to make the video too long, like I said. So I'm just going to uh, get the end portal frames. So these will be in the portal room, normally. Um, obviously, I could find it, but I don't want to make the video too long. So I'm just going to clear out some space. So it will look a bit like this. Again, instead of purple, it will be green. That's just my texture pack. And then what you want to do is maybe you want to craft a few more, 11 should be enough because normally actually the stronghold spawns with one maybe two maybe none already in for you but yeah you just need to fill up fill all of these up with the eyes and bang there you go there you've got the portal actually this is a good time to show you an interesting glitch that some of you might not know unless they patched it the under underside of the portal doesn't show but be careful if you find the underside of the portal because, oh, you can't go through the underside. But you can go through the top. And this is the most crucial part of the entire run. The most intense part, the most exciting part. You probably all know what I'm talking about. The Ender Dragon fight. So, obviously, try not to look into any endman's eyes um that is not very good so there's two ways you can do this you could either use a bow using string from the uh from the piglins you also get arrows from the piglins so you should have enough so you could use a bow and take out these crystals you could also bridge you could also tower up if you really want to but that is quite slow so that's only if you're not actually speedrunning um, so yeah, well, you, there's two ways of doing this. If you want to actually speed run though, and get a world record time, you only need to do one. So if you're not really, if you're still speed running, but you don't want to get a world record time, you're not that good, you don't think you can do that. An easier way is just to eliminate all the crystals using a bow and arrow. Because when an arrow hits one of these crystals, they explode. And that means the ender dragon can't heal but another way you can do it and like i said in my last video it doesn't work so well in pocket edition which is what i'm playing on right now um it is blowing up the ender dragon with beds so what you want to do is you want to use the obsidian from your piglin trailer so you can kind of make a little setup like this there's two ways of doing it so you can set up like this so just um when i get the right positioning how am I not doing this? Okay, so you can just do this. And you can see by the fire that it creates a huge explosion. I'm just going to show you 
how big of an explosion this is. And you can imagine that does a lot of damage to the dragon over here. Um, but maybe an easier way of doing it is just to blow it up on the side. Because when you do it like this, like I showed you earlier, it has a chance of just not working for some reason. The ender dragon either breaks the beds or you can't get in the right position to place them. It can be quite struggling, uh, challenging, whatever. So you, another way is just to get down here and then you can you can place one block here, one block here, and then you can just spam. Um, and this will create multiple explosions and this will completely shred the dragon to bit. So that's the two ways of defeating the enemy. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Um, but with nothing else to say, 